الحمد لله الحمد لله رب الأرض ورب السماء خلق آدم وعلمه الأسماء وأسجد له ملائكته وأسكنه الجنة دار البقاء وحذره من الشيطان ألد الأعداء ثم أنفذ فيه ما سبق به القضاء فأهبطه إلى دار الفناء وجعل الدنيا لذريته دار عمل لا دار جزاء وأنزل عليهم الرسل والأنبياء فنحمله تعالى في السراء والدراء ونسأله تعالى موت الشهداء والفوز بالجنة دار البقاء ونشهد أن لا إله إلا هو لا ند له ولا شبيه ولا شركاء ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم المعصوم الذي ما أخطأ يوما ولا أساء الشهيد يوم القيامة على الشهداء المبعوث رحمة للعالمين فاللهم صلِّ وسلِّم وبارِك عليه وعلى أصحابه وآله الطيبين الأجلاء We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we seek His forgiveness and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and bless our children We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy in our parents We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our master, our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-Ahqaf, surah number 46, ayah number 15 and ayah number 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahi rahman rahim Wa wassayna al-insana biwalidayhi ihsana حملته أمه كرها ووضعته كرها وحمله وفصاله ثلاثون شهرا حتى إذا بلغ أشده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال ربي أوزعني أن نشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين أولئك الذين نتقبل عنهم أحسن ما عملوا ونتجاوز عن سيئاتهم في أصحاب الجنة وعد الصدق الذي كانوا يوعدون صدق الله العظيم Some of you who were here last week I promise that I will continue with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The topic last week was on one of the names of Allah, Al-Malik. But today, inshallah, we'll skip that topic and probably we'll resume, inshallah, with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next week. But today, I just want to share this passage with you from Surah Al-Ahqaf. Something that I was just reflecting upon yesterday and I thought I would just share my reflections with you. In this passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a dua of someone. Someone who just turned 40 years old. And you know, the age of 40 is considered the prime of life. You know, it's a time when you, or when a person attains, you know, full maturity, both physically and intellectually as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in this passage. By the age of 40, most people, they have steady careers, married, they have kids, some of their kids are already grown ups, right? They have owned their, or they own their, their, their houses. 
And so in this passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the feelings and the thoughts of that person as he stands at the end of one half of his life and at the beginning of another half. And so he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a prayer, with a dua. So inshallah, let us just focus and pay attention to the dua of that person who just turned 40 years old. He said, Qala Rabbi awzi'ni. How does he start his dua? By showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, help me, inspire me to show gratitude to you for all the blessings that she gave me. He's saying before anything else, before I ask for more favors, before I ask for anything, let me just thank you for all the favors that you bestowed upon me. Let me just show gratitude for all the blessings that she gave me for the last 40 years of my life. And this dua, brothers and sisters, comes from a heart that appreciates the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From a person that he acknowledged that he has been treated well by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the last 40 years. And that's why he's making dua, or that's why he's starting his dua by thanking Allah, praising Allah, showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr. And shukr, brothers and sisters, is the only right response to show someone who has been helping you, who has been assisting you, who has been uh, taking care of you, protecting you. Shukr, as well, uh, shukr, brothers and sisters, is also a sign of faith, a sign that you have a strong faith. Because if you're 40 years old or, or older, and you thank in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all these blessings that He gave you, all the favors that He gave you. That's a good sign. That's a sign that you have a strong faith. Because only people with strong faith can thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that He gave them. And those people, by the way, are rare to find. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ just a few of my servants are in that state of gratitude. They are in a state of gratitude. Just a few. Why is that? Because we forget. We forget to reflect on the favors and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forget that all the blessings that we have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we only focus on what we don't have. I don't have this. I don't have that. Doesn't really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve to be thanked for all the countless blessings that He gave us? Doesn't He deserve to be, you know, to give you the, the, the ni'mah of being able to come here today, fulfill His rights, the ni'mah of Islam, the ni'mah of Hidayah, of guidance? Shouldn't He praise for or thank for for so many blessings that he gave us, the ni'mah of, of health, the fact that you were able to walk to the masjid today, or just think about people who couldn't sleep last night because they had something, they were sitting in, in the bed somewhere, in a hospital somewhere, they get up in the morning, they have to empty bags of urine because they couldn't go to the restroom and do it just normally like anybody else. Isn't that a great blessing that you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Should we, shouldn't we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fact that we're secure? It's a ni'mah. Security is a ni'mah. It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wealth is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Health. You know, one of the great statements of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, he said, As-sihhatu taj ala ru'us al-asihha. He said that health is a crown on the head of the healthy people. Only the sick people can see it. Only the sick people can see that crown because you're, you don't see it. You're healthy. But there are others who are not. So all these blessings, brothers and sisters, deserve to be thanked. He should show gratitude. He should appreciate all these this blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you. And if you don't, then you're exposing these blessings to be removed. And Ibn Ata'illah, he said, 
that the person who does not show gratitude for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, he's exposing these blessings to be taken away from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Oh human being, what has deluded you concerning the generosity of your Lord? And the scholars, they said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the answer in the question. It is the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has deluded him. There's so many favors, there's so many blessings, there's so many generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what caused him to be in that state, deluded. You know, because he takes everything for granted. He takes the religion for granted, he takes the ni'mah of having family for granted. He takes the, the health for granted. He takes everything for granted and he does not show any type of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna al-insana la zalumun kaffar. That human beings are kaffar, are ungrateful. And a kaffar in Arabic is called sirat mubalagha, which means he's not just ungrateful, he's excessively ungrateful. But that person who just reached 40 years old, he's thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's starting his dua by just before anything, let me just thank you. Let me just thank you for all these blessings that you give me in the last 40 years of my life. He's also thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him great parents. Parents who taught him what is right and what is wrong. Parents who taught him about Islam and about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because this is something that's out of our hands. We don't choose our parents, we don't choose our children. And so if you were born in a, in a household where your parents nurtured you, uh, uh, taught you Islam, uh, took care of you spiritually and, and emotionally and, and physically, that's something that you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And then what is the second part of the dua? قَالَ رَبِّي أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ Now he's making dua not only for himself but also for his parents. He's not just focusing on himself. He didn't forget at the age of 40. You know, and, and you know at the age of 40, everybody's busy with his family. Everybody's busy with his children and his spouse. You know, I'm working on my career. Everybody's busy. But this person did not allow life to destine him from his parents. He did not allow life and the problems of this life you know, to, to, to cause him to cut off relations to his parents. No, he's still mindful of his parents. He's still making dua for his parents. He's still focusing on his parents. You know, and making dua is a sign of ihsan to your parents. And we were commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only to make dua, but to be kind to them, to be gentle to them, not to display any type of displeasure or express any type of displeasure to our parents. And whatever you do, Wallahi, whatever you do, you will not be able to repay them. Look, I'll tell you the reasons that I changed the topic. I was supposed to talk about the names of Allah. I turned 40 today. Today is my birthday. And I was, re I was just reciting this ayat and reflecting on this ayat yesterday. And when I was reading this ayat, the part that hit me the most is the part about the dua for the parents. I lost my parents when I was a little child. You know, and I, when I tell you this, I, I'm, 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 I'm honest about it. I'm serious about it. If I'm able to do anything in this world, to have my parents come back to this life and spend a few hours with them or a day with them, Wallahi, I will do it. Wallahi, I will do it. I will do anything. But it's not going to happen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather me with them, inshaAllah, in Jannah, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of you, Allahumma ameen. But if you have your parents or your parents are still alive, you can secure a place in Jannah for yourself. By being in their service, being kind and gentle to them. You know, a Yemeni guy, he was doing a tawaf around the Kaaba. Right? He was performing Umrah. And he saw Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And he said, Yadna Umar. And he was just carrying his mother. She was an elderly. She couldn't walk. And so he was carrying her on his shoulders. 
And he didn't want her to feel bad or embarrassed. And so he started to, you know, sing. So instead of going around in, in circles, in a tawaf, and making dua, he was actually comforting and entertaining his mother. He had her on his shoulders and he was going in circles says, I'm her humble camel, I'm her humble camel. And she started to weep. And he started to weep and he saw Abdullah ibn Umar and he said, Ya ibn Umar, atara anni. Do you really think that I have paid my mother for everything that she did for me? He said, Wallahi, wala sarkhatun min sarkhati al-wilada. Not even a single groan when she was in labor, when she was giving birth to you. Not even one single scream. So don't take that for granted. You know, we don't appreciate the blessings as they are, ta are taken away from us. So if you have your parents, that's your ticket to Jannah, inshallah. So after that, the third part of the dua, he says, He's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire him to do righteousness, to do something good. Something that will benefit him for the rest of his life. He acknowledges now that he's 40 years old, the end is near. Because let us be honest, you know, most people don't live until 80. You know, A'mar Ummati, as the hadith said, Rasulullah said in the hadith, A'mar Ummati ma bayna sittina wa sabi'in. The ages of, of my people are between 60 and 70. There are people who go over that, there are people who die before the age of 60. But the majority of people, they die between 60 and 70. Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, when he reached the age of 40, he began to carry a stick with him. And so people said, what, what is this? Why you carry a stick around? He said, to remind myself, لِأُذَكِّرُ نَفْسِي أَنِّي مُسَافِرُ To remind myself that I'm just a traveler. You know, that this life, the life of this world is not my residence. It's not my home. It's just a part of my, it's a stage or a part of my creation. You know, I'm going to die and then I will continue also my journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this man is 40 years old and now he's acknowledging that the end is near. So he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help me to do something good. Inspire me to do something good that will benefit me and that will benefit people. Right? And you might ask, what kind of a good deed should I do? What kind of a good act should I be involved in? Rasulullah was asked that question many times. And he gave different answers. People used to go and say, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best deed in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sometimes he would say, being obedient to your parents, being kind to, kind to your spouse. Sometimes he would say jihad. Sometimes he would say, As-salatu ala wa pray. On time. Sometimes he will say Qiyamul Layl. Sometimes he will say just control your emotion, that's the best deed. But if he asks me what is the best deed for you to do, my answer will be the best deed for you to do is the deed that you don't want to do. The best deed for you is the deed that you don't want to do. You sitting next to someone right now. Someone that you don't like, for whatever reason. It's not my business, but for whatever reason. Right? Somebody you didn't even have, you didn't even have that chance to speak with him. <laughs> it amazes me sometimes when people hate each other and they never got to speak to one another. They've never sat like human beings to just, just have a decent conversation. Well, it amazes me. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're not going to judge each other on the day of judgment because of this personal grudges and hatred and animosity. Alhamdulillah, we're not going to judge each other on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, it's in the hands of Allah and He's the only judge. He's the only qadi on the day of judgment. So if you really want to know what is the best deed for you to do, the best deed for you to do is the deed that you don't want to do. Push that pride down. Push that pride down, right? Suppress it, suppress yourself and go make it up with that person. That's the best deed for you. You hate Qiyamul Layl, you never pray Qiyamul Layl. You cannot get up at night and pray Qiyamul Layl. That's the best deed for you to do. Somebody oppressed you, wronged you, insulted you, made fun of you, back bit you. Let go, give up, forgive him. 
And if you don't, if you can't forgive them, that's the best deed for you. Force yourself to forgive them. If you're miserly, if you don't like to give sadaqah, right, the best deed for you to do is to force yourself to give sadaqah. As a matter of fact, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best type of sadaqah is the sadaqah that you give when you're covetous, when you don't want to give. That's the best sadaqah. That's the best sadaqah. And note here, that this person is 40 years old and he's still asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help me to do something good for the rest of my life. And that again, it's a good sign that this person has a good faith. And it's also a sign of love. It's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبَدًا إِسْتَعْمَلَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a human being, He will use him. And so some people, they said, Ya Rasulullah, how will Allah use someone? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يوفقه إلى الخير قبل موته. He will inspire him to do something good, really good, good deed, that will benefit him, will benefit the society, will benefit his community, the people around him, and he will die before that. Right? So he will do that act before he dies. So it is a sign of love. It's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And note here also that he didn't say, I just want to do any type of act. I didn't want to just do any, any deed. He says, Inspire me to do the, bad, the deed that you love the most. The deed that you will accept from me. Because what is the point of doing or uh, performing a deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept? Right? So he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire him to do something beneficial. Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from him. And what is the, the fourth part of the hadith, the, the dua? He says, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي Now, he's making dua for his children. Rectify the affairs of my children. Rectify the affairs of my children. He wants his good work to continue with his children and their children and so on. Again, he is focusing not only on himself, but also on others, family members, his children. You know, sometimes we forget to make dua for our children. When was the last time that you actually make dua for your children? Right? How often do we do it? You know, look, at the, look in the Quran, read the stories of the, the prophets who had children. Prophet Ibrahim, for example, every single time you read the story of Ibrahim in the Quran, when he talks about his family, he makes dua for his children. People forget that. People forget that the dua of the parents, according to one report, a hadith from Rasulullah, he says the dua of the parents is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And when you make dua, what kind of dua do you make? What do you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? For them to be just like good in school and you know have a bright future and get married and that's it. Or to have a good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teach him about manners. Or to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you teach him about manners, ethics and principles, values. Hold tight to their principles, to the religion of Allah. We see in people right and left, they leave the, the religion. Right? So what kind of dua that you make? So this person is making dua for his parents. This is the fourth part of his dua. And it could be that he, when he was young, he has done something or he has made some poor decisions and he has asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect his children. He doesn't want his children to make the same mistake. And so he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him. Or it could be also that he was so obedient to his parents and he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him also with obedient children. As Rasulullah said, the way you treat people is the way you're going to be treated. Treat your parents well, your kids will treat you well. You know, being evil and wretched to your, kid, to your children, well, to your parents, this is what you're going to get from your children. Last part of his dua, he says, Inni tubutu ilayk. He ends his dua with making tawbah, sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu. So it's amazing. This person who started the, the, the dua with shukr and he ended it with tawbah. He started the dua with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And he ended it with tawbah. And he did not wait until he turned 40 to make that dua. He did not wait until he reached the age of 40 to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 
seek his forgiveness. No, he has been doing it his whole life. But he's also mindful of the fact that we're humans, that we're slit, we have shortcomings, we have mistakes, right? And you have to always renew your tawbah. All of us, whether you're 40 or younger or older, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, return to Allah, all of you, make tawbah, global tawbah. Maybe that's what we need, just a global tawbah. Everybody should just like repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe the society out there will be a better place. When everybody just makes tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he acknowledges his fact. He acknowledges also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqbal al-tawbah an ibadi. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who forgives people. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ My servants, those who transgressed against themselves, don't lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَخْفُرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Because Allah forgives all sins. Allah forgives all sins. You know, Allah loves the excuses. You do something wrong, just go to Him, ask Him forgiveness. The door is open 24-7. Just ask. Just ask for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, the age, the age of 40 is a critical point in everybody's life. It really determines the, 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 the destiny of that person in the Day of Judgment. And Imam Al-Alusi and other scholars, they said, if a person reached the age of 40 and is unable to demonstrate that the good in him outweighs the evil in him, that this person most likely is destined for punishment in the Day of Judgment. So think about it that way. Right? Think about that your life is, is like a marathon. You know, when you come closer to the finish line, what do you do? Do you slack? No, you speed up because you want to win. Think about it that way. Think about what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? How do you want to be remembered by your spouses, by your children, or your people in the community, your neighbors? Will they just say, well, I was just a guy among many. Or will the community really consider it to be a great loss? You know, what a great person. He did this and this and that. May Allah have mercy upon him. So think about it this way. Think about your contribution in this life. What you're going to leave behind. You know, ask yourself, did my life really matter? Did he give enough care and love for the people around me, the people that loved me? My wife, my children? Did, my, did my, my, my life really care? So, if you have good answers, positive answers for all these questions, then alhamdulillah, you did good, congratulations. Then you will deserve the end of the passage. You will deserve what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ نَتَقَبَّلْ عَنْهُمْ أَحْسَنَ مَا عَمِلُوا those are the people, these are the ones from whom we will accept the best of what they did. And we will just overlook their misdeeds. They are the companions of Jannah. They are the people of Jannah. And this is the promise of truth, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they had been promised. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, examine our deeds and reflect upon the, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflect in our lives, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy in our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to raise good children, righteous children, Allahumma ameen. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما انفعنا وزدنا علما وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن شاء الله let us conclude the khubah by making dua for our brothers and sisters who are sick may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the distress and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them speedy recovery اللهم أمين 
Fatima Abu Bakr, Sister Ruqayya Sayyid, Fortuna Ahmed, Ahmed Muhammad, Sister Amina Farah, Sister Nisreen Hussein, Harun Hussein, Sister Amina Rahman, and Abdal Sami. A dua for uh, Sister Julie who passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her and remove her sins and resurrect her with the prophets on a day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ja'al hadha al-jum'a jam'an marhuma. Tafaruqla ba'dihi tafaruqan ma'asuma. Wala taj'al fina wala hawlana wala khalfana shaqiyan wala mahruma. Allahumma khfil lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina. Wa thabbit aqdamana wa sunna ala qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma man waliya min amri al-muslimin amrun farafaq bih. Umman ishtadda alayhim fashdud alayhim. Ya yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on our parents and bless our children. Ya yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from anxiety and from grief and from laziness and inability. Ya yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this community and all Muslim communities all over the world. Allahumma ameen. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa anha'ani fahshai wal munka wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'alakum tadhakkaroon. Adhkuru Allah ya'adhkurukum asaluhu ya'atukum astaghfiruhu ya'akfir lakum wa'akum as-salam.